watching ESPN on ABC, home of the 2010 Rose Bowl game and the City BCS National Championship game. Mike Gundy brings his Oklahoma State team to Iowa State today to meet the Cyclones. The Cowboys are number 19 in the BCS, but Ames will be rocking as Iowa State is still in the race in the Big 12 North. It's the Cowboys meeting the Cyclones now. Welcome to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. And welcome to Ames, Iowa, a Big 12 matchup as Iowa State hosts Oklahoma State. For the Cyclones, they're still in the thick of a crazy race of the Big 12 North. In spite of last week's loss to Texas A&M, there's no team in the Big 12 North that has less than two losses. So that's still a wide open divisional race. The Cowboys looking to bounce back. Zach Robinson with four interceptions and a lopsided loss to Texas. And the Longhorns running away with the Big 12 South. Hi again, everyone. I'm Bob Wischusen here with Brian Greasy. Thanks so much for spending part of your weekend with us. And Brian, it's been a crazy year for Oklahoma State. At one point after beating Georgia in their opener, they're ranked fifth in the nation. Now they're 19th. They've gone through the Des Bryant scandal. Through the middle of it all, though, they've been able to count on Zach Robinson. Well, it's been a challenging year for Zach Robinson, no doubt. You know, we talked at the beginning of the year, high expectations, Kendall Hunter, Des Bryant, Zach Robinson. Two of those three amigos are gone now, and it's all about Zach Robinson. He has performed very well despite those losses and has this team in a position to compete in the Big 12. One of the best stories in college football, though, has to be Paul Rhodes coming home to coach here at Iowa State after two disastrous years with Gene Chizik at the helm. He goes to Auburn. Rhodes is the defensive coordinator at Auburn. He gets fired by Chizik. He ends up coming home to take Chizik's whole job here at Iowa State. Yeah, like two ships passing in the night. And Paul Rhodes, a hometown boy, this is his dream job, no doubt. And he brings a lot of passion and intensity back to Ames in this Iowa State program. The thing that he does well, he loves to teach young men how to play football and how to win. Uh, you see what he's up against? There's no conference titles in 97 years, but for him as a rookie head coach to win five games hasn't been done since 1931 here at Iowa State. And a big part of the, of the success this year has been his win in Nebraska two weeks ago. The emotion and intensity that he showed in leading his football team was tremendous. And they'll need more of that emotion today if they want to beat a talented Oklahoma State team. Be your ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan Maxima, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. What a day to start the harvest here. In Iowa, 71 degrees our temperature at kickoff as Oklahoma State visits Iowa State here at Jack Trice Stadium. And for Oklahoma State, seven wins if they get a win today would be a first in program history in that they would have won seven straight, seven games, four straight years. They've never done that before. Mike Gundy in his fifth season also has this team authoring a tremendous road turnaround. In their first 13 games on the road under Mike Gundy, they were 2-11. and 11. They're 6-3 and three away from Stillwater in their last nine, Brian. And he's got a quarterback in Zach Robinson. As we said, it's been a lot, through a lot of trials and tribulations this year. Well, and coming off a very emotional, difficult loss last week against Texas, and Zach Robinson throws four interceptions in that game, two return for touchdowns, not the way that he wanted to go out his senior year against Texas. But he is a competitor. He is the undisputed leader of this offense and this team, and it's on him to get this attitude right today. Oklahoma State won the toss. They deferred their choice to the second half, and Quinn Sharp sends it out of the back of the end zone. And all of the trials and tribulations that Zach Robinson has been through, well, how about the trials and tribulations of Austin Arnott, who really was starting to get it, according to their offensive coordinator, Tom Herman, when they played Kansas three weeks ago. Now he's missed the last two and a half games coming back to start for the first time off of a hand injury. Yeah, the timing of his injury was really bad for this Iowa State team, but he is a talented quarterback, has all the tools, big kick, 6'3", can throw the football, and he needs to lead this team, get some positive plays early in this football game, and get their confidence up on offense. 
You'll see the starters for Iowa State on their offense at the top of your screen. Arnott puts it up on first down and has a man underneath Darius Darts. At the 28 yard line, he's brought down. And it's interesting today, you'll see both these teams are work exclusively almost out of the no huddle and mostly rushing the football for Iowa State, but I like opening the game, throwing the football and getting them on their heels. Alexander Robinson looks for a cutback lane, takes a pop and still picks up a first down out across the 30 yard line. And Robinson has been their best player on offense. He leads the, the Big 12 in rushing. This is the number one rushing team in the Big 12. And it's kind of an oxymoron out of the spread offense to have a, a predominantly rushing football team. Normally you think of teams throwing the football out of the spread, but Iowa State, Iowa State has been very effective rushing the football out of spread sets. And on first down, they spread the field with five wide receivers. Goes one underneath to Derek Catlett as tight end. A first down out to the 48 yard line. And it's big to get some uh, confidence early. Arnott has a hand injury, but we'll see how he throws the football today. But he stands in there, no hesitation right there getting rid of that football. These are two teams that really get back up to the line offensively with a lot of pace. Then you see Arnott look back over to the sideline to get the final play call. there on first down for Alexander Robinson Shane Jarka came through and made the stop and you can see as well the starters came across the top of your screen for this Oklahoma State defense Brian it would not be unusual for us to see both offenses today run maybe 80 offensive plays no it'd be fun to see that I've never seen a game where both offenses have that many plays but these two teams definitely have the the ability to do so and you see right here they look to the sideline to get the play Shut down again, Alexander Robinson. It'll be third down and 11. Well, and early in this football game, Iowa State wants to dictate the down and distance. They want to be efficient. And first down run, they lose two yards with Robinson. Right there, they don't get much on second down. Now you're in a third and 11 or 12 yards. Not the situation or down and distance that Iowa State or Arnaud want to be in on third down. Boys bring a blitz. Arnott well protected. Fires one up the seam. Tipped and almost intercepted. Markel Martin, the free safety, got a hand on that pass. Yeah, you're going to see early in this game, Arnott struggling with the hand injury. How much velocity he gets on the football right here. He had a receiver open, but he just did not throw the ball down the field far enough, and the ball got tipped. Let's watch as this game goes on. His velocity on his throws and accuracy had that bruised hand from three weeks ago. That could affect how he grips the football. Mike Brandner set to punt. Harris Cox deep to receive for the Cowboys. A wobbly kick. And it seems to hold up in the wind and take a great Oklahoma State bounce all the way out to about the 34-yard line. So good field position for Zach Robinson after only a 22-yard punt. And Brian, I'm not sure in your career, either in college, or in the pros, if you ever lost your top two weapons offensively for a good portion of time, but what must be going through or has gone through the mind of Zach Robinson this year when well, all of a sudden you look out there, you guys aren't there. It's so tough because there are such high expectations coming in. I know Zach Robinson, he thought this was finally the year that we're going to be able to compete with Texas, and he loses his two top guys, and uh, the whole season changes, but he's done a marvelous job of getting everybody involved in this offense, young guys as well. The only wide receiver is Hubert Anyum, and he makes a dive and catch for a gain of about eight yards on first down. And Anyum's a guy that, one of those young guys that has had to step up and, and replace the X receiver, Des Bryant, who was suspended, been much talked about. The hand off to Toaston. Toaston in the open. Into plus territory goes Oklahoma State. And the first two plays of the football game, you see the two replacements for Des Bryant and for Kendall Hunter. 
Uh, Tosin has been the one that's got the bulk of the work from the tailback position when Hunter went down with the foot injury. Now Kendall Hunter into the game. To the left of Robinson in the shotgun. A little shovel pass to Hunter, getting him on the edge. And he's got a first down. Down to about the 32-yard line of the Cyclones. And that's the first real meaningful snaps for uh, Kendall Hunter. He got a few a week ago, but they're going to try to get him the ball on the edge. He is that elusive back that Mike Gundy craves in this offense. And he's multidimensional. Catch the ball out of the backfield, rush the ball. They missed him in this offense. And I know that Mike Gundy and, and Zach Robinson are happy to have him in the backfield again. And off the toasting again. And he can't move the pile past the line of scrimmage. Bailey Johnson, the nose guard, arrived first for Iowa State. But Tostin, as you said, has been an able backup. He averages about 85 yards per game rushing. Well, he has, and he's really the hammer. He's 215 pounds on offense. But good job by Ohio, uh, Iowa State uh, on the defensive front there. If they're going to win this football game, they have got to stop the run. Their defensive coordinator, Wally Burnham, told us yesterday that is their main objective. They're not worried about Robinson throwing the ball down the field. If they can't stop the run with Hunter and Tosin today, they can't win the football game. Trap hand off to Tosin. He cuts his way for about two, maybe three yards. It'll be third down and at least six. And you see the difference when Tostin's in the ball game, more of the inside the tackle running game. When Hunter's in the ball game, expect more on the edge perimeter type runs so he can use his speed and elusive. down and six quarterback draw for Robinson can't get outside lost the football at the 25 yard line do they rule him down by contact they do Kennard Banks came up to make the hit three yards shy of a first down and this is the X factor that Zach Robinson brings to this game in the position of quarterback this is a design draw trying to get the defense to drop in their zones and allow him to rush the football for eight or nine yards and get a first down Iowa State was in a zone defense there, so they weren't fooled and came up and made the tackle. Mike Gundy considered going for it. Took a while to get Dan Bailey and the field goal unit out onto the field, but settling for three in a 42-yard attempt. And Bailey knocks it right down the middle. So Oklahoma State strikes first early on in the first quarter. It's 3-0, Cowboys. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. A beautiful day on a beautiful campus here in Ames, Iowa at Iowa State College Football presented by Kay Jewelers, ESPN on ABC. Oklahoma State strikes first. They have the 3-0 lead. Iowa State about to go back to the offense. And Mike Gundy, five years in, Brian, trying to do the same thing at Oklahoma State and raise the expectations and raise the level of play. But now Paul Rhodes is really beginning anew here at Iowa State. He really has. And in, in Big 12 conference play, they've won one more game each of the last five years than they have the previous year. So they're continuing to get better. Last week, a little bit of a setback against Texas. But not all of his players and his weapons were on the field, as we talked about. And their last game of the regular season will be against Oklahoma. So another chance to beat either Oklahoma or Texas. Out to the 20-yard line. We'll begin for Austin Arnott. Arnott bruised his hand a few weeks ago against against Baylor at halftime he left the game and this is his first start since did you notice anything him throwing the ball in that first right. series it looks like he still has good velocity and when you bruise that hand and that wrist not only do you have an issue gripping the football but also with your release but right here he seems to be throwing the ball well it's coming out of his hand in a tight spiral fashion right there I think a good sign for Iowa State that he looks healthy. That was something they said they wanted to keep their eyes on early to see how the ball was coming out of Arnott's hand. With a wide receiver next to the near side, the darts. And he picks up two yards. Markel Martin made the stop. How much of that from a quarterback standpoint gets in your head when you know you're playing hurt, especially if you're throwing it? 
Well, you know, they have medicine that can take care of a lot of those things. <laughs> and I'm, I don't know if he had uh, any medicine before the game, but if it's a little bit of a nick, there's sometimes you can just play through it or some medicine will take care of it. But if it's a structural thing, you can't do anything about it. Robinson up the middle. Cut down at the 26-yard line by Lucian Antoine. Third and four. Yeah, and this is the spread offense. You're going to spread everybody out and then run it up the gut right there. A nice hole, good blocking by the offensive line. And if Robinson can make one or two guys miss there, it might have been a big play. Arnott slants oh. one left incomplete. So three downs and out for Iowa State. Parrish Cox deflected that pass, and he's third in the nation this year. He averages just under two passes defense per game. Yeah, and he is uh, he is a gambler. He's a little bit of a riverboat gambler on defense, and if he reads something recognition-wise that he sees offensively and reads a route, he will jump it and make the play, and right there, he was inches from uh, having a pick six. So Brantner's punt comes to the near sideline, and it's out of bounds. Just barely across midfield tonight on ABC. More college football. Most of the nation will see a Big East rivalry. Number five, Cincinnati tries to stay undefeated as they take on UConn. Other parts of the nation will see Oklahoma, Nebraska, or USC against Arizona State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern. Earlier this week, we had a chance to talk to Brian Kelly when we were doing the game on Tuesday night about when Tony Pike would be able to come back. And I'm sure all eyes will be on Nippert Stadium tonight to find out who that quarterback's going to be. Well, and Zach Kolaris has played tremendous in his absence. Check down underneath to Justin Blackman. Very close to a first down for Oklahoma State. Fred Guerin made the stop. Great field position again for Oklahoma State. Iowa State has had two punts in the ball game, 130 yards and 122 yards. Not very good. Hosted gets stood up at the 48-yard line. Garen and Patrick Neal combine on the collision. And again, early in this game, the Iowa State defensive line, an emphasis on stopping the run. Right there, Fred Garen, number 43, the linebacker, gets in and makes a stop for a tackle for loss. And there's Patrick Neal. In 1977, the last time before this year that Iowa State beat Nebraska and Lincoln, Brian Neal, his dad, was a starting guard for Iowa State on their offensive line. False start will be called against the Cowboys. Prior to the snap, false start, 77 of the offense, penalties five yards, remains third down. That's not a bad father-son tradition to be able to share, right? We beat Nebraska and Lincoln. You beat Nebraska and Lincoln. <laughs> well, they'll always have that story to tell around the dinner table at Thanksgiving, you know, that both these, the Neil, uh, the Neil father-son combination for the Cyclones beat Nebraska. I think they'll be telling their grandkids that story. Third and seven after the false start. Four-man rush over the middle. Ball thrown behind the receiver, but a nice job by Anyum to adjust and make the catch. And there's a flag thrown in the secondary. Personal foul, grabbing and twisting the face mask. Number two of the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Well, that penalty will make this almost a 30-yard play all in all. Yeah, well, it was a nice job by Robinson. You're going to see he's going to come off the edge, and the back's going to come out to influence the linebacker. When the linebacker jumps the back out of the backfield, it opens up a big window for Annium behind it, and Robinson does a good job getting into football. After the penalty, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. So two poor punts. By Iowa State giving Oklahoma State great field position. They kicked the field goal on their opening possession. And now again a false start will be called. Prior to the snap, false start. 84 of the offense. Penalties five yards. 
remains first down. Mike Gundy, of course, calls all the plays for Oklahoma State. He might watch his record for passing yards in Oklahoma State history go down today to Zach Robinson, but he has not liked so far this season how many penalties that the Cowboys continually seem to rack up. Robinson on a keeper. Can't get to the edge. Kennard Banks stayed home. Looked like a broken play here. Looked like he wanted to give the ball to Tostin, and Robinson just decided to keep it there. Not sure uh, if he was full. He didn't have any blockers out there in front of him. Didn't look like a very well designed play, or maybe there was just a miscommunication in the backfield. So a loss of a yard makes it second down at 16. And a drop put it right in the hands of Keith Tostin. And Tostin dropped it. Well, and Zach Robinson has been really successful here in, in, at Oklahoma State, only second to Mike Gundy. And at some point today, uh, he will pass Mike Gundy in career passing yards. And, and I know Mike Gundy is a proud man and had a great career at Oklahoma State. But if one person was going to break that record, he wants it to be Zach Robinson. Third and 16. Play clock down to two. Robinson has to hurry. Play clock at one. They get the snap off. He floats one down the sideline. A little push off by Anion. And he can't free himself enough from Kennard Banks. Well, the line of scrimmage, the 31-yard line. So you're looking at just under a 50-yard field goal. And they will try one from long range with Bailey. Uh, and that was an opportunity for Zach Robinson. Uh, Anion was matched up man-to-man -man on Banks on the outside and beat him. Robinson just needs to get the ball down the field. You're not going to complete the pass if you throw it out of bounds. If that ball was down the field more and let Anium run under it, he had a play in man-on-man -man coverage. Bailey from 48 yards away. He's got the wind at his back, and he uses it. He's two for two, both over 40 yards, and it's 6-0 Oklahoma State inside of five minutes remaining in the first quarter. It's the highest ranking they've ever had in volleyball, and... Paul Rhodes, I think he would take similar results on the football field. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. He beat Nebraska, so now he just needs to beat Texas. Again with the wind at his back, Quinn Sharp out of the back of the end zone. And let's go back to our Times Square studios and check in with Matt Weiner. Thank you, guys. I'll be with you all afternoon long to keep you on top of the biggest stories of the day, starting with this Taco Bell update. A homecoming today for Pennsylvania native Terrell Pryor as his Buckeyes take on Penn State. And a good start for Pryor. Seven-yard touchdown rush there. Buckeyes have gotten the jump in Happy Valley. It's 7-0 Ohio State. All right, Matt, thanks very much. There was another notable result today in the Big Ten that might be discussed at some point at the greasy family table. <laughs> Hand off to Alexander Robinson to the near side for about two yards. Let me check the cell phone there for <laughs> Brian Greasy. Are there any text messages from Dad? I think I owe Dad dinner. I uh, think Purdue yep. played Michigan today. I think last I saw it was 31-30. Is it a final? I think it's gone you have final. confirmation? <laughs> I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Excuse me while I turn my phone off. <laughs> Second down and eight. <laughs> it again cuts it back up inside and has a first down for Iowa State out across the 30 yard line Bob shoes alongside Brian Greasy a gorgeous day 71 degrees at Jack Trice Stadium here in Ames Iowa it's Oklahoma State number 19 in the BCS taking on Iowa State a game that means so much for bowl eligibility for Iowa State certainly and for Oklahoma State to still try and make a run toward the end of the Big 12 season they still have Oklahoma in their last regular season game 
Low snap, Arnott handles it, sends it to the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Robinson. And it looks like, you know, they've been successful. Iowa State has rushing the football early in this game with Robinson out of the backfield, and Oklahoma State is going to bring some blitzes to counter that rushing game. And, and there you see coming off the edge, both linebackers come off the edge and try to get some pressure. And Austin Arnott now with his third head coach in four years of quarterback. That makes his third offensive system in four years That's at quarterback as well as he drops back to throw again. Wants to set up the screen right. Robinson makes the catch, and it is blown up by Hugo Chinasa. A loss of a few yards. And a great play by Chinasa to make that tackle because if he gets past Chinasa, it's going to be a huge play. They bring a blitz off the strong side. You're going to see four blitz here. And Arnott does a great job of buying some time, giving some ground and trying to get the ball to his back. You see Chinasa comes up. Oh, right guard and right tackle for Iowa State. Missed the block. If they could have got on Chinasa, that could have been a huge play. Arnott thought about taking off and running. Puts a jump ball up down the sideline. And it's a first down to Colin Franklin. Arnott had to pull up before he went across the line of scrimmage to make that throw, and he found Franklin for a first down. Yeah, and I think he thought about running, running the football there, but a good job staying behind the line of scrimmage. He dropped back, a little bit of a pass rush, and I think he thought right there, and maybe I'll pull it back and giving Colin Franklin, uh, his backup tight end, an opportunity at 6-7 to go up and get that football. Robinson sweeps right, no gain. But put yourself in Arnott's shoes, Brian. You get your third offensive coordinator in the four years you've been in the program. How hard is it to then deal with a brand new system all over again? Well, it's very difficult. And, and uh, you know, to have three systems, it's three different terminologies. It's like learning three different languages. And it's not just for Austin Arnold. It's for this entire group. And they've got a young group, so uh, a challenge for them to overcome. But I think that he likes this system better than any he's been in before in his career. Here comes the blitz on second down. A gain of about four to Franklin. It'll be third down and six. Big third and six here for Iowa State. On Oklahoma State's 45-yard line, the first time they've been in Oklahoma State territory. And if they're going to win today and, and fashion the upset, they're going to have to convert third downs. Arnott to the wing. It's tipped and almost intercepted. Markel Martin read that route run by Darius Starks. And if he had picked it off, there was no one home. Yeah, and Martin is a safety, the starting safety. He'll play the nickel back in third down situations. And that was not a good decision there by Arnott to throw that ball late in the flat. And I think he saw Martin at the last minute and just decided to push the ball over their heads. But if he would have thrown an accurate ball, that would have been a pick six. Again, into the wind, Mike Brantner. He has had two punts so far, one of 30 yards and one of only 22 yards. Trying to change field position here. And this a much better kick into the wind, a wobbly spiral. Inside the 10-yard line, it hops to the two where it is downed by Dakota Zimmerman, the long snapper. Well, that got the job done. Zach Robinson backed up against it, and we come back. Iowa State trails by six, but Brian, it could be worse. Yeah, it could. They had an opportunity. Zach Robinson had an opportunity with Hubert Annium right here. Uh, a series ago, he beats Banks off the line of scrimmage right there and had a chance down the field for a touchdown. But been a tough, tough couple plays for uh, Banks, number seven right there from Iowa State. Coming down on the kick last time. Got to keep your head on a swivel down there. You might get your head knocked off. Still down to the two-yard line, though. First and 10 deep, and Robinson rolling in the end zone. Fires went up the sideline. Nice catch made at the 16-yard line by Demarcus Connor. Nice play by Connor on the outside to make the, the catch and get a get his foot down. But backed up on your own end zone, you want to be safe. And a rollout is one of the safest plays you can have. And good throw there and a good catch by Connor. That's only his fifth catch of the season. Uh, and he's getting some more looks now that Des Bryant is, uh, is on the shelf. 
And off to Tolston. He's out to the 21 yard line. You mentioned Des Bryant. You see those missed opportunities and you wonder what could have been if he would have stayed away from Deion Sanders maybe and not denied the allegations when he was confronted by those with the NCAA after meeting with Deion Sanders, denied the meetings back in July. Oklahoma State rules him ineligible in October. The appeal has now been denied. And already, as Robinson scrambles out to the 26-yard line, close to a first down, Des Bryant has declared himself eligible for the NFL draft. He is going to go pro uh, as the final reinstatement appeal was denied. Yeah, and make no mistake, Des Bryant is the most talented receiver in college football. He's the number one receiver on everybody's draft board for next year, and I think that's why he's made the decision to go to the NFL. But really, it's a sad commentary that Deion Sanders has gotten involved with college players and put their eligibility in jeopardy. And uh, maybe, hopefully, now this this won't happen again. And, and guys that are playing in college football will not associate with anybody outside of the NCAA. Toasting out to the 33-yard line. It's probably a good lesson learned for everyone involved. And we'll certainly talk more about it as the Cowboys, without their best player, Des Bryant, here on the road, still with a 6-0 lead at Iowa State. End of the first quarter. teams moved the ball in the first quarter both defenses bent but did not break Oklahoma State with two field goals they had the six nothing lead here in Ames as we head to the second quarter twice Iowa State has moved the ball out close to midfield but they have been unable to move further they get shut out in the opening quarter Jack Robinson to the near side Anyum stiff arms a man out close to the 40 yard line he's got a first down And the first quarter was a successful quarter for the Iowa State defense. You know, talking with Paul Rhodes yesterday and Wally Burnham, the uh, defensive coordinator, they said they would be happy with 25 to 28 points giving up to Oklahoma State. It's a powerful offense, and uh, for them to hold them to six points in the first quarter is a, is a uh, success. Got to get something going on offense now. Kendall Hunter tries to turn the corner, cuts it back and down the sideline. He's got a first down. Kendall and a gain of 13 yards as we check in with Matt Weiner. Hi, Bob. Let's get a Verizon Wireless update on those explosive Oregon Ducks who ran all over USC last week. Found themselves down 10-0 at Stanford until Michael James gets involved. He's got a leg up on his 140 yard per game average 60 there in a 10-7 Stanford lead. Meanwhile, Alabama and LSU still scoreless nearing the end of the first. All right, Matt, thanks very much. Boy, Michael James, what a season he has had as LeGarrette Blunt, obviously the well-publicized suspension from the opener. What a tremendous fill-in, a shovel pass. There goes Hunter again. Caught from behind, but not before he picks up another Cowboy first down. Jesse Smith made the stop. Yeah, Jesse uh, Smith is the middle linebacker for this Iowa State defense and does a good job playing off a block right here. He's undersized, but he's one of the smartest players on the team, always in the right position. But a good play there by Oklahoma State with the draw underneath. Iowa State came with a blitz off the strong side and left the, the middle of the field vulnerable to the draw. Houston turns the corner on the near side and lost his footing as he tried to shake his way down the sideline close to another first down though. Well and this is their their bread and butter the perimeter running game and to get some good blocks on the edge a crack back block and one guy left and Banks makes a good play there but I think it was more because Tostin slipped than anything else but they make their money on the edge with these running backs Tostin and, and Kendall Hunter. Goes to now over 700 yards rushing this year. And here he goes again. 
down to about the 24 yard line. Now Zach Robinson closing in on the career passing mark at Oklahoma State. He came into today needing only 75 yards to break Mike Gundy's all time record. Now he's down to only 12 yards to pass Mike Gundy. He's also been as a runner a great weapon. Closing in on 2,000 career yards rushing as well. And he's got 220 yards rushing this season and four touchdowns. And we saw they will design some plays for him, specifically on third down and in the red zone, where it allows him to use his feet to convert on third downs. And Toaston stopped by Garen after a gain of two. It's funny talking to Mike Gundy I said to him you know when I looked at your passing numbers in comparison with Robinson you guys obviously about even he's about to break your record but he's got about 2,000 more total yards from scrimmage than you have all purpose yards Mike Gundy said well yeah I was about negative 230 <laughs> yards rushing for my career <laughs> Robinson's about plus 2,000. I said, yeah, I noticed that. And we're not the best scrambler, I guess, in the world. I said, no, I'd run for my life, but I didn't get too many positive yards. I think he appreciated you pointing that out. <laughs> Runs the option on the keeper. Robinson brought down about three yards shy of a first down by Michael O'Connell. I think it'll be interesting to see uh, where Zach Robinson, he's a senior, where where he goes in the NFL draft. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of talents. He can throw the football. But you add in the element of elusiveness from the quarterback position. And I know offensive coordinators in the NFL love to have mobile quarterbacks that can throw, that can think, that can execute. And, and Zach Robinson may be a sleeper in the NFL draft this next uh, April. Big third down play here, third and three. This is the area where where they like to run Zach Robinson. And with the play clock winding down, Oklahoma State will spend a timeout. So. So we'll step aside just for a moment. 6 nothing Oklahoma State. What a great play by George Teague. And you can see play number 14 revealed tonight at 8 p.m. That was one of my favorites of all time because it was an effort play, you know. Took a long touchdown pass away from a quarterback. That's one of your favorite That's plays? That's one of my favorites. It's all about effort and attitude in football, Bob. Well, a drive that began for Oklahoma State at their own two-yard line, an 11-play drive facing third down and three in the red zone. Robinson underneath got the first down to the 11-yard line. Demarcus Connor made the reception. In this situation, Oklahoma State has their entire offense at their disposal. They could throw the ball, run the ball. Zach Robinson can run it on a draw. I mean, it's just tough to defend this offense, which is so multifaceted on a third and three situation. Robinson off a of fake at the 10 yard line. They rule Tracy Moore down at the 10. Not sure that his knee ever hit the ground. But the play blown dead. Oklahoma State's been terrific so far this year in the red zone. That's a lot of touchdowns as well. 22 oh, really touchdowns and 32. That's what I look at. It's not how many times you score. It's how many touchdowns you score. Because you score touchdowns, you win games. You kick field goals, you give yourself a chance to lose games. And they've been so effective in the red zone because of what we talked about, their diversity. Being able to run the football and throw it. But then the added element is Zach Robinson and his feet converting in the red zone. That's been the difference. Robinson feels the pressure. Throws it in the back of the end zone. A man gets loose wide open. Tracy Moore for the touchdown. Not only does Robinson go six for six on the drive, not only does he throw the touchdown pass, but he also breaks Mike Gundy's record for all time yards at Oklahoma State. What a way to break the record. And yeah, if you're going to break the record, you want to do it on a touchdown pass. But what an outstanding drive there by Oklahoma State. 98 yards. And Zach Robinson extending the play at the end there to get the touchdown. <laughs> 13 to nothing. Cowboys trying to make a statement on the road here at Iowa State. College 
Football, presented by K Jewelers, brought to you by 2010 Ram Trucks, giving tough a smarter name, Ram. Aflac, we've got you under our wing. And Bud Light, with the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. Iowa has actually become the number two wind power producer in the country behind Texas, the two states we've got this afternoon's game. Iowa State. And Zach Robinson a moment ago goes over 8,000 career passing yards, a brand new school record, passing Mike Gundy. He leads his team on a 98-yard touchdown drive. And Oklahoma State has expanded their lead to 13 to nothing. And Brian, there's so many keys to a play like that being successful. Well, there really are. I mean, great play by, by Zach Robinson, moving to his left and throwing back against his body, but extending the play Giving his guys a chance to get open in the end zone was what made that play successful. Tracy Moore had only six catches coming into today, but he's a big play receiver. Six catches for an average of 26.3 yards per, and it's just another guy, along with Hubert Anyum and Justin Blackman, a redshirt freshman, Demarcus Connor, a team that's trying to find solutions offensively in the absence of Des Bryant. Line drive kick, Josh Lenz brings it out. And Lenz finds room. Down the sideline, Lenz. All the way to the 44-yard line of Oklahoma State. Quinn Sharp ran him out. The true freshman with a big kickoff return. Let's go back to the, to the touchdown. You see Keith Tosin at the top of your screen with a great block on a blitzing corner. And then Robinson buys a little bit of time, makes a tough throw under pressure, takes a shot right there. But you see in the back, it gives him time, gives more time to find some space and be friendly to the quarterback. And that's all Zach Robinson right there, buying time for his guys to get open. We'll see if Iowa State now, having made a big play on special teams, can convert and get themselves on the board. A fumbled snap by Arnott. Broken play, and he will go down. A loss of three. Eric Burton and Tolu Moala combine on the stop. Well, you get the big kickoff return, and on the first play, the quarterback drops the snap. Yeah, you got to get something going offensively. Defensively, you've, you've held them pretty good, but right now you need something by Arnott in this offense, and it's on Arnott's shoulders. He's a leader here. He needs to make plays. Arnott under pressure, and he will be sacked at midfield. Wanted the big ball down the near sideline, but Hugo Chinasa helped collapse the pocket, and here's this week's Aflac trivia question. What two current national championship winning head coaches were former Iowa State assistants? There have been a lot of great coaches that have come through the Cyclones program. A lot of great, uh, going back to Johnny Ma Major's era, you had uh, Jimmy Johnson, well, maybe Paul Rhodes could be the next. His team right now faced with third and long. Arnott stumbles. Somehow maintains his footing. Fires one high. It's tipped, batted around, and intercepted. Parrish Cox on the pick. Tripped up at the 35-yard line. Well, we talked about Austin Arnott trying to make some plays. He needs to get this offense going. Looked like this one here was a little bit of a force. He's rolling to his left, much like Robinson did on the touchdown. It's a tough way to throw the ball, running to your left and throwing back against your body, and not an accurate throw right there. A little high, and a great job on a deflection by Cox, who is just a playmaker in that backfield. If the ball's in the air, he's going to get it, and he knows what to do with it once he gets it. Second interception of the year for Cox, and on the turnover, Oklahoma State right back to the offense midway through the second quarter. On the pitch, it's Kendall Hunter. Fred Garen, another tackle for the Cyclones. And talking with Paul Rhodes yesterday, you know, he said the thing we need to do is stop the run, number one, which they've done a pretty good job of early in this game. We've only given up 
84 yards and most of that was on the last drive but they also had to not turn the football over and that's about the discipline it's about execution and you can't give Oklahoma State as many opportunities on offense really tough on your defense when you turn the football over they've been on the field all all quarter Hunter again on second and four cuts it back he is about a yard shy of a first down, but it's time for a Sports Center right now with Matt Weiner. All right, Bob, Sports Center right now is presented by Sprint. You know about number four, Iowa's lost today. Number three, Alabama is trailing LSU thanks to this Jordan Jefferson touchdown pass to D'Angelo Peterson. Number six, TCU is poised to move up in the standings at San Diego State, and the Horned Frogs have taken an early 14-0 lead on the road. Get to the snap. Full start. Number 76 of the offense. Penalties five yard. Remains third down. That changes things after Matt's update. Third and one becomes third and six as they tried the quick quarterback sneak by Zach Robinson to pick up the first down. But a false start will back up Oklahoma State. Well, and that backfires. You know, a lot of these spread teams that don't huddle, if they get to a second and short, third and short situation, they'll just rush to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball, and the quarterback will sneak it. But right there, rushed it and one of the guys jumped off sides and backfires now you're third and six a whole new ball game wide open on the near side a low throw though Tostin couldn't scoop it up so Iowa State's defense gets the hold and now Oklahoma State will have to punt into the wind yeah and right there it's uh, it looked like Robinson had plenty of time to throw the football and just didn't get the ball to Tosin. Tosin was wide open. Looked like there was somebody in between Robinson and Tosin. Maybe the defensive end had to throw it over him. And as a quarterback, you got to be able to deliver the ball in all different points. Quinn Sharp just gets it away. Pretty good kick into the wind, forcing Lenz to call for a fair catch inside his own 20 yard line. So we'll step aside. It's still a shutout being pitched by Oklahoma State here in the first half. You're watching College Football, presented by Kay Jewelers. Back in Iowa, a beautiful day at Iowa State. It's time now for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. What two current national championship winning head coaches were former Iowa State assistants? Among others, Pete Carroll, an assistant, 1978. And Mac Brown from 1979 through 1981. Not only Mac Brown, not only Pete Carroll, but also Jimmy Johnson with the buzz cut there sneaking into the bottom of the picture. Is, Pop yeah. Warner was here. <laughs> Little cradle of coaches here in Ames. Going nowhere on first down, though, Alexander Robinson. How about the job done so far by the Oklahoma State defense? Well, they're much improved. Bill Young is their first year defensive coordinator, comes in and really has established a new identity on, on defense. His first season here, they're 42nd in the country in total defense. And everybody that thinks about Oklahoma State thinks about offense for the past five years and Mike Gundy. And really, their Achilles heel has been defense. Haven't been able to stop anybody. And uh, Bill Young has a lot of experience as a defensive coordinator. He was at Ohio State, and Oklahoma, Miami, USC, Kansas. I mean, he's been all over the country teaching uh, defensive football. And, He's got these guys playing well. They've only given up 10 rushing yards in the, in the first half for Iowa State, who's the leading rushing team in the Big 12. That's Chris Donaldson, junior defensive tackle, down on the play. Watch number 95, and that is a lot of weight landing on Chris Donaldson. Well, Bill Young told us that they basically use a defensive line by committee. They roll 10 guys through that defensive line to keep them fresh, and that has turned them into one of the best run defenses in America. Oklahoma State, number 13 overall in college football, allowing only 99 yards per game rushing. That was the big statistical matchup in this game because they're going up against the best rush offense in the Big 12 in Iowa State. But so far, that's a battle being won by the Cowboys. They'll try it again with Robinson, and this time a big run. The announcer jinx works perfectly for Iowa State. The minute I start talking about <laughs> Oklahoma State's run defense, Robinson rips off a first down march. And Bill Young wants you to stop talking now. <laughs> As do many listeners. <laughs> that last play, a good misdirection play to get Robinson on the edge. And they got to do something to mix up their running game here against uh, Oklahoma State. 
This time a keeper. And Arnav is out to about the 39-yard line, a gain of six. Patrick Levine was there for Oklahoma State. And I think part of the reason why Oklahoma State has been better defensively against the run is because Bill Young has been incorporating zone blitzes on first and second down, which helps stop the running game. And that's been a big part of what they've done here in the first half. And that last play was an example of it. What brought four off the strong side, that's to stop the running game. Now they're bringing five guys up on the line of scrimmage here. You see them all lined up. Arnott picks up a yard. That's a tough set to run the football against when you bring five guys up on the line of scrimmage. And Bill Young is mixing in different defenses, different looks. A straight 4-3 look. He's working in a 3-4 look. We have both outside linebackers on the edge. Mixing things in, not allowing Iowa State to get a beat on them in the running game. Now they're in a 3-4 set. Third down and three. Arnott under pressure. Tuck it under, tries to run for it. Bulls his way for the first down out to the 45-yard line. Good running by Arston Arnott as Price and Martin couldn't stop him. Well, that was a great shot by Austin Arnott, and he comes up holding that arm a little bit. You know, he's had that injury on the right hand, but nothing downfield. He gets out, and he can run. He's a big guy, 6'3", 224 pounds. You see him muscle his way for a first down, but I wonder if he sacrificed a little bit of his health right there with his right hand. He seems to be, he seems to be a little bit upset with himself, and that right hand is... And I think Paul Rhodes and Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator, both realized that from the sideline as the coaches call timeout. Austin Arnott injured his hand a few weeks ago, missed two and a half games when his throwing hand was bruised when it hit a helmet in the Baylor game. And this a moment ago on that last run cracked by Victor Johnson. And just as we went to break, it looked like Jerome Tiller, Brian, was going to start to warm up. Yeah, he's definitely getting uh, ready, and he's on the field now. And uh, I don't know if Arnott will be able to come back in this football game. But... So Jerome Tiller, the redshirt freshman, in again in replace of Austin Arnott. Arnott trying to make some throws over on the sideline to see if he can stretch that hand back out. Hand off instead to Alexander Robinson. Robinson. And he's out close to midfield. Tiller made his first career start as a redshirt freshman against Nebraska. And what happened? Iowa State got eight turnovers from the Cornhuskers, and they won on the road in Lincoln for the first time in over 30 years. And his teammates definitely have confidence in him. You don't go into Lincoln and win there uh, and not get confidence from the rest of your guys on offense. But he's got a strong arm, just lacks experience. Robinson about two yards shy of the first down. Donald Booker brought him down. Seven plays on this drive, all on the ground. And we're keeping our eyes on Austin Arnott over on the sideline. He's got the helmet back on. Is this where you're a quarterback? You try to go make your case to get back in the game? <laughs> well, there's a little bit of politicking that's involved. But uh, I know that Paul Rhodes feels confident in Tiller and in him getting the job done. And he won't put him back out unless he knows he's completely healthy. Third and two. Whistles. A false start. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 72 of the offense. Penalty will be five yards. Remains third down. Well, that win for Iowa State at Nebraska helped by a big fake punt call. And then the touchdown of the game, the only touchdown of the game, Jerome Tiller. Threw it deep to Jake Williams, a former walk-on who just got a scholarship this year. That was the game-winning touchdown. And that led to that tremendous post-game celebration in the Iowa State locker room. Third down and long. Tiller well protected. Fires one to the sideline. Flags out. It'll be pass interference. Williams again, the intended receiver. Man up with Terrence Anderson. And it looked like Terrence Anderson may have got there a little early. Played through the wide receiver to that ball.
the debate here might be between defensive holding or pass interference either of which would give Iowa State a first down. Pass interference. Number 84, the offense. Petaluni, 15 yards from the previous spot. Remains third down. Derek Catlett, the tight end for Iowa State, called for offensive pass interference. Wow. Wow, and you can't see it right there. Catlett was out of the picture, but a uh, good throw by Tiller, his first throw of the game. And looks like maybe there's Catlett right there. He's going across, and they call him on a pick. That's what they called him on. They're trying to get the, the wide receiver open underneath, which he did, but you gotta you gotta run a route. You can't just go in there and block the linebacker. That's gonna get called for offensive interference, and they got him right there. So Mike Gundy decides to decline the penalty. And that will force Iowa State to punt. The timing of the flag and where it was thrown, both right about the time that the ball fell incomplete here, Williams. And an ugly punt from Brantner, but it takes a great bounce. Fielded on a hop by Parrish Cox. And he won't get outside his own five yard line. Denard Banks made the stop. And that looked like a little bit of revenge from uh, Banks on Cox after Cox hit him on the last punt. Kennard said, you're not doing that to me again. I'm going to get you back here and make you pay for making that decision to field that punt. Well, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And the story so far, at least a big story, the rushing yards. Only 45 rushing yards for Iowa State. They average over 200 a game. And Oklahoma State's got to be thinking we got them right where we want them. We went on a 98-yard drive last time. Let's do it again. And again, Robinson from the end zone. Plenty of room to run if he tucks it under and he will. Using his blocker out to about the 8-yard line. And that's the same play they used on the first play on the two yard line last drive and it worked then why not do it again and uh, get your quarterback out on the edge with a run pass option in your end zone high it's the ability to get out there and get some yards and get out of the shadow of your own goalpost. Both teams have two timeouts left and a good first half for Robinson efficient and most of his work done on that last touchdown drive. He was six for six on the 98 yard touchdown march. And off to Tostin. And he is right at the first down marker. Written down by number two, James Smith. James Smith brought him down. And depending on where they spotted, it looks as if he got enough for the first down. Now they're going to have to measure. James Smith came up and made a nice tackle there right at the first down line and uh, he's a good story. He's a fifth year senior for uh, Iowa State went back to uh, he's from Haiti went back to Haiti for the first time in the offseason to meet his mother never met his, his born uh, natural born mother back in Haiti and uh, had an opportunity to go back and meet her special story. Well, coming up, we've got the Capital One Halftime Report. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer in the studio. They'll have scores and highlights from other games in college football. Certainly other regional games. Ohio State taking on Penn State right now, and they'll check in on LSU Alabama. All that coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report in just a moment. Run by Tostin was good for a first down. So now the clock starts to roll once again. Again, toasted hard running for about 10 more yards. Right behind Russell Okung, the big left tackle. And Okung is a, one of the best offensive linemen in the country and uh, going to be a, a star in the next level in the National Football League. He's got the size, but he's also got the athleticism. 6'5", 300 pounds. And, 
Uh, he's the only offensive player on the Lombardi watch list uh, this year. All the other uh, players are defensive players, so he's the only one from the offensive side. And he's a leader on this offense. I talk about the three amigos, uh, Kendall Hunter and Des Bryant and Zach Robinson. I think it should have been the four amigos and include him <laughs> right there because without him, they're, they're not as successful. Well, he anchors the line as Nate Frayer has helped off the field. Defensive tackle for Iowa State chicken up on that last play. But this is an offensive line for, I for Oklahoma State that has only allowed four sacks all season, number one in the country. Now, some of that has to do with the escapability and mobility of Zach Robinson, but if you allow only four sacks, you have to have a heck of a left tackle. Well, you certainly do. And not only that, they've got a heck of a center and a heck of a right tackle. They've got 115 starts between them, and that experience is uh, invaluable for this offense. Second down and short. And Oklahoma State with a 13 to nothing lead, not taking any chances, letting the game clock wind all the way down. Tostin looks for room. And he is hammered out of bounds, just shy of the 30 yard line. Patrick Neal pushed him out. You got to think if you're Iowa State right now, you're in this football game. You're only down 13 points. You've been outgained offensively, but a turnover right here would be great. And, and Wally Burnham, their de defensive coordinator, was talking to us yesterday. They need to force more turnovers on defense. Um, and then a lot of that is, is attitude, tackling the football, being in the right position when the uh, pass is thrown. And, but uh, Wally's got a lot of experience, 40 years uh, coaching college football and played for Bear Bryant. And Oklahoma State content to take a two-score lead to the locker room at halftime. What a first half it was for Zach Robinson. 13 to nothing, his team has the lead. The touchdown drive that he led them on, he was six for six on a 14-play, 98-yard touchdown drive. And so the Cowboys lead by 13 here at Iowa State at halftime. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer coming up with our halftime report. 13 to nothing. Oklahoma State with the lead. Now let's head back to our studio. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Set for the start of the second half, Oklahoma State with a 13 to nothing lead over Iowa State. Bob Schusen alongside Brian Greasy here in Ames. A first half that was dominated on both sides of the ball, line of scrimmage wise for Oklahoma State. I guess we had two big questions for Iowa State coming into today, and it was no answers to both in the first half. Well, it was. Could they rush the football, and could they stop the rush in Iowa State? The number one rush D offense in the Big 12 has had 45 yards in this first half, and that's not going to cut it. And Oklahoma State has done a great job of mixing up their defense. You see Sexton number 20 coming off the edge and some zone blitzes has had an opportunity to disrupt this running game outside. They try the perimeter, nothing doing on the outside, and then they try inside, nothing going on inside with the trap. So give credit to Oklahoma State defensively uh, up front to stopping the number one rushing uh, team in the Big 12. That was our city inside view, and Austin Arnott, of course, was injured a few weeks ago against Baylor, missed the second half of the Baylor game, missed all of the Nebraska game, and played only one emergency snap last week against Texas A&M with a bruised hand. In the first half, took a shot on that hand from Victor Johnson, the free safety for Oklahoma State, left the game, and it's been Jerome Tiller ever since at quarterback, and Oklahoma State has won the toss and deferred. We'll start the second half with the football. So we'll see if Arnott can come back. Here's Parrish Cox bringing back the second half kickoff and he will be shut down before he gets to the 20 yard line. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And Zach Robinson, a record breaking throw. The only touchdown we saw in the first half. Uh, and it wasn't as he extend the play there using his feet allow the receiver to get open in the back of the end zone and really this capped off a 98 yard drive that set the tone in the first half for the Cowboys offensively and they've been able to do uh, pretty much what they want rushing the football very effective 111 yards in the first half. Robinson the quick hitch Daniel he tiptoes his way down the sideline and then David Sims does anything but tiptoe into him as he bangs him out of bounds at the 28 yard line a gain of eight yards on first down though. Hey, 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 
And if you're Iowa State now defensively, you played uh, pretty well in the first half, limiting the Oklahoma State offense to 13 uh, points. Now you need to create some turnovers in the second half. That's what they were going to preach at halftime is get back in this football game with some turnovers. And Anyam was shaken up on that last hit. David Sims in his first year at Iowa State. He actually signed with Oklahoma out of high school, but that went to Butler Community College, eventually came to play with the Cyclones, and he laid a lick on Hubert Anyam, and Anyam walks off the field slowly. In the absence of Des Bryant, Anyam is the leading receiver for Oklahoma State. Toasted on second down, runs a man over and picks up a first down. Let's go back to the Anyam hit as David Sims just knocked the number one receiver for Oklahoma State out of the game. Yeah, this will be a big loss for Oklahoma State. But he was just trying to get a few extra yards and helmet to helmet right there. Now that's a point of emphasis, helmet to helmet contact. When a player lowers his head like that, though, should a flag come out? Well, it's, it's, you can't because if, if the offensive player lowers his head, the defensive player is trying to hit him and tackle him and it inadvertently hits his helmet. Short gain to Tracy Moore. You see the helmet to helmet flag come out so often, and I think rightfully so, right? You want to protect the health of the players. At the same time, though, if you're David Sims there, what do you do if all of a sudden the offensive player lowers his head into yours? Well, the rule is to protect defenseless players, and right there, Anyam was in a very defendable position. I mean, he's trying to deliver a blow on Sims, and so Sims is trying to protect himself, too, so a uh, good no call there. Robinson on the option keeper into plus territory but that last hit on Hubert Anyam he's still on the sideline we could hear it from up here Robinson has his team right back up at the line though set to go and he'll throw it on first down looking for the bomb down the seam just off the fingertips of Dameron Fuchs he had a step well, it's another moment. You know, Cowboy fans are saying, what if Des Bryant were running that pattern well, instead Oklahoma, of a sophomore? Oklahoma State comes out. Here he is right here. He's going to go down the field, but hard play action is what gets the defense up. The safety comes up and runs support, and he slips by him, and Zach Robinson just, maybe it's, he doesn't have enough reps with him. You know, he's a new receiver, hasn't had a whole lot of playing experience, and he and Zach Robinson haven't had a lot of time in practice to, to rep that play. And, you got to think if he had Bryant, they'd connect. Quick hitter underneath to Tracy Moore. Still 10 completions in the last 11 attempts for Zach Robinson. Talking to Gunter Brewer, their offensive coordinator, co-offensive coordinator. He talked about Robinson had a very interesting year. The hamstring injury keeps him out of all of their preseason workouts. During the season, his grandfather passed away, and they were very close. And that really shook up Zach Robinson midway through the year. And then you lose your number one back and your go-to guy in Des Bryant. He's fought through a lot this season to get his team to 6-2. and two. Here comes the blitz on third down. Robinson. Flips it down the sideline and just throws it away. And a flag comes out late. Robinson was chased out of bounds and was just trying to throw it away. And if he was hit late out of bounds with Bailey Johnson in pursuit, it could be a personal foul. Personal foul. Tackling by the horse collar against the defense. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. And a huge penalty on third and five. An incomplete pass and a stop defensively for Iowa State now turns into a first down. But the rule is clear you can't grab the offensive player by the back of the shoulder pads. And that was very clearly a horse collar. So a free first down for Oklahoma State inside the Iowa State 30 yard line. That is a brutal penalty for Bailey Johnson to take. 
Kendall Hunter back in the game at tailback. He takes the handoff with blockers out in front. Finds a hole, and there goes Hunter. A first down for Oklahoma State, close to the 15-yard line. And a good job up front by the offensive line. Andrew Lewis, the center, pulls out on the edge and gets a cut right there, which frees Kendall Hunter. Gets into the secondary, and that penalty kind of took a little bit of the air and the effort out of this Iowa State defense. Hunter getting his first extended playing time since the very start of the season. He takes the handoff again, spins down to about the 13. James Smith made the tackle. That was the same play they ran the last play. They pull the guard, the right guard in the center again uh, and block it to perfection again. Hunter just got caught up in the backfield there, but he had room to run if he could have got past the first line of defense. Pitch out to Toasted. Has a lane to the 10, inside the five. And it's first and goal, Oklahoma State at the two yard line. David Sims missed a tackle on the perimeter. And that gave Toasted the lane he needed. Well, it gave Toasted the opportunity, but Fuchs, number 83, the receiver, gets a good block right there on Sims, number one, and gave uh, Toasted an opportunity to get that first down and get inside the five yard line. Good job by Fuchs. So now a chance for Oklahoma State to take a three-score lead. Toasted up the middle, into the end zone for the touchdown. What an impressive drive by the Cowboys. And they extend to a three-score lead. And a killer penalty, you go back to it. The, the horse collar personal foul, Iowa State had the the Cowboys stopped the first drive out after halftime and could have got some momentum going, but that keeps it alive, and it was all downhill after that. A 10-play, 80-yard scoring drive helped out by the Bailey Johnson horse collar on third and six. Boy, it almost feels like a turnover when you get a penalty like that. It kept the drive alive. Toasted polishes it off, and it's 20 to nothing, Oklahoma State. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Welcome back. College football on ESPN and ABC presented by K Jewelers. A commanding lead now for Oklahoma State. They've got the 20 to nothing advantage over the Iowa State Cyclones. And Brian Greasy, it's been the run game for Oklahoma State today. They have controlled the line of scrimmage. Well, they have. They had a couple good runs in that last drive there after the penalty that allowed him to get inside the five yard line and eventually punch it in but Tostin uh, has really been the workhorse after Kendall Hunter has gone down he's been the workhorse all year but especially today he's got 82 yards on 15 carries. Cowboys averaging 5.7 yards per carry Iowa State 2.8 yards per carry and it'll be a touchback on the kickoff. Let's go back and look at some of those run plays that polished the drive yeah, off the Cowboys. Yeah, they found, found something. They're pulling the, the center and the right guard on these running plays, getting out on the edge and getting some blocks on the second level. Right there, you see Kendall Hunter gets into the secondary. And uh, right here's the center, Lewis. He'll pull, and the right guard will pull and kick out. And then the center gets on the second level and gets a cut. It's kind of like your student body right uh, that you used to see in the old days, but it gives them an opportunity to get some athletic offensive linemen and with angles and opportunity to block up front, and then you see the, the touchdown run by Tostin to finish it off. Austin Arnott back in the game at quarterback for Iowa State, so maybe this breathes a little life back into the Cyclones to get their starting quarterback back down by three scores now. Alexander Robinson picks up five. Swanson Miller was the first on the scene for Oklahoma State, and you wonder if Austin Arnott, Brian, talked his way back into the game. Well, we're going to find out. If he can throw the football, then he's going to play. But if he can't throw the football, it'll be evident not only to you and I, but everybody in the stadium whether he can be on the field. So Jerome Tiller back on the sideline. The starter back in. And Arnott on a keeper. No gain. It'll be third and five. 
what this does for Oklahoma State defensively is until he throws the football, they're going to stop the run. And there they had 10 guys up around the line of scrimmage. They are not going to allow Austin Arnold to hand the ball off. They're going to make him throw the ball to win. Jumped and got back. Arnott fires one up the seam, incomplete. It looked like he had the velocity he wanted on that pass, intended for Darius Darks, but he took a shot from Hugo Chinasa right after he threw it wide. He did, and typically, if a guy jumps offside, it may snap the ball. But Chinasa comes on an inside stunt from the defensive end position. Arnott never saw him coming. Got rid of the football, but paid a price. So down 20 to nothing, Iowa State. Even with their starting quarterback back in the game, go three downs and out. And a wobbly kick that's barely going to make it to midfield. So Mike Brantner has struggled, and it'll be great field position for Oklahoma State when we come back as Zach Robinson goes back to work. In September and November, Iowa farmers will harvest approximately 13.9 million acres of corn and produce about 2.4 billion bushels during the harvest. I do my part to eat as much of it as I can. And these guys taking a break from the harvest. <laughs> a little corn chowder. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to a very impressive offensive march for Oklahoma State. Yeah, and it started here with the penalty. It's hard to blame. Bailey right there, but you can't bring him down by the collar. A 15-yard penalty gives him a first down, and then Kendall Hunter in the running game takes over, and Tosin will finish it off with the touchdown. But uh, for Iowa State, a little air was let out of the balloon there after the turnover, and now they're back on the field again. And now the senior Bo Johnson, third string tailback, gets his turn. Great field position again for the Cowboys. Robinson to throw. Being chased near the sideline and throws that one away. Looked for the pump fake in the deep throw to Justin Blackman. Good coverage downfield, though, by Iowa State as Josh Raven got the pressure on Robinson. And that time they learned not to pull him down by the horse collar, just push him out of bounds and avoid the penalty. But good job downfield and coverage. This just feels like one of those games. As much as Iowa State has struggled offensively, they need Oklahoma State to make a mistake. Yeah, they do. And, and I don't know that they're going to uh, last week. Zach Robbins had four interceptions against Texas and the onus all week in practice has been protect the football. If you protect the football and execute, they're going to win today, and they've done that so far. Pitch out to Johnson. There goes Bo Johnson into the secondary. Boy, it doesn't matter who the pitch man is. They have had success running the football to the edge today. Well, and I think the reason that they're having success on the edge is because their wide receivers are blocking. Last drive, we saw uh, a good block on the edge right here. You see another block, number 80 right there, Connor. Good block on the edge. It allows them to get some yards on the perimeter. Talking with the uh, offensive coordinator Brewer uh, yesterday, he said Connor is the best blocker, in his opinion, in the Big 12, a big kid, 6'1", 213 pounds. Dropping back to throw, and then flipping into the flat to Johnson. And Zach Robinson for a gain of maybe a yard. Michael O'Connell came up and tripped up Bo Johnson. And this is underrated. You know, here's Connor right here. He's going to come up and get a block. And you know, this is underrated in football. The wide receivers, they all want to catch balls. They want to catch touchdowns. They want to be T.O., but they need to block in the running game if they're going to have a successful offense. And, Takes me back to another number 80, Rod Smith for the Denver Broncos. Caught a lot of balls, a lot of touchdowns, but he was a tremendous blocker and freed up Terrell Davis and a lot of those uh, great uh, runs he had in 97, 98. We had 2,000 yards. Anyum takes another wicked hit at the 20 yard line. Again, it's a first down. James Smith came up and hit Anyum this time. And it looks like Anyum is okay as he will stay in the game. Well, he was knocked woozy a bit, knocked out of the game before. Watch this hit. Well, he's running a little straight up and down. He, 
he needs to get his pads down. That's the second big hit he's taken in this uh, second half. And he'll learn. He's young. He's only a true sophomore. He's got a lot of talent, but he needs to get down or get out of bounds. Jesse Smith there to make the stop on Bo Johnson. Jesse Smith's a terrific story. Former walk-on. He was a first-team All-State high school football player at linebacker and at punter in Iowa. Went to the same high school as Kyle Orton. But he's had seven games this season with 10 or more tackles. And you can see the leading tackler in the Big 12, sixth overall in the nation. And up to third in the nation as well as he's played today. Seven tackles already this afternoon, so he might be on his way to double-digit tackle game number 11 this year. Or number eight, pardon me. To the edge goes Toasted. Walks into the end zone with a touchdown. Oklahoma State making it look awfully easy. And it looks like the same play that they were running uh, on earlier drives. This time they don't pull the center and guard. They just man up, and he makes a cut. Smith, number two, the safety, goes to the outside, looking at the perimeter run, and Tostin cuts it up inside for the touchdown. The Cowboys very much in control midway through the third quarter. It's now Oklahoma State with a 27 to nothing lead as Tostin scores again from just over 15 yards out. With only three races remaining, Jimmy Johnson holds a commanding lead in his quest for an unprecedented fourth straight championship. This week, he'll look to foil the hopes of Jeff Gordon, who goes for the season sweep in Texas. The Dickies 500 at Texas. It comes your way tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern on ABC. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown. And what can any of those top four catch Jimmy Johnson? Probably not. As inspirational year as Mark Martin has had. It looks like the rest in the chase have dug themselves just too deep a hole. And speaking of digging yourself too deep of a hole, <laughs> it might be tough for the Cyclones to come back. 27 to nothing. Oklahoma State in control. A returnable kick a yard deep for Josh Lenz. Lenz again finds a seam. Good return out to the 33-yard line. Let's go back to the second rushing touchdown for Keith Tostin here in the third well, quarter. Well, I've been really impressed by these wide receivers blocking. Connor, we talked about his blocking ability. Watch the block right here in the corner. Then watch James Smith of safety come down outside. And here's Tostin. He's going to cut it up inside for the touchdown. But great blocking on the edge by the wide receivers for Oklahoma State. And then a good cut by Tostin. And it's clear sailing to the end zone. Also, Good block on the edge by the tight end there. And down 27 to nothing. Needless to say, this completely takes Iowa State out of the way they want to play offense. Although they'll keep it on the ground to Robinson. But this is a team that only throws for about 180 yards per game. They're the number one rush offense in the Big 12 at 200 yards per game. And today they only have 54 yards rushing. last game just gets them finally over 100 total yards of offense and that will put them back close to being under 100 yards of total offense Robinson loses a yard but I don't think you're going to see them change uh, offensively even though they're down 27 and nothing you know we've we've talked about it and uh, clearly they, they have one way they want to play and Paul Rhodes is, is going to stick to that but they've averaged 200 yards a game and just have not been able to get it done on, on the ground today over the middle and that is close and I think good for a first down to Marquise Hamilton who is the leading receiver for Iowa State it's been very very quiet today that's his first catch on the afternoon and even though they're down 27 nothing I you know I, I still expect to see the same style of offense from Iowa State Again, an underneath pass. This one, good to Jake Williams, and he's got a first down as he scampers to about the 42-yard line of Oklahoma State. Quicker pace now offensively for Iowa State.
and a timeout call. Timeout, offense. This is their first of the half. I think that one was called from the bench. A frustrating afternoon for Paul Rhodes, trying to get something going offensively here late in the third quarter. About 10 miles away from the stadium here in Ames is the hometown of Paul Rhodes. Nevada, Iowa, as he grew up only about a 15-minute drive from this campus. His team struggling this afternoon, though, as Austin Arnott is able to get down to about the 37-yard line. But how do you think they play the rest of this game, Brian? Well, you know, I think that they're going to continue to play their game. And Paul Rhodes wants to see improvement. We talked to him yesterday about what his goals are for this season, and they weren't, they weren't tied to wins and losses. They were tied to improvement each and every week, each and every player in all facets of the game. And right here in the second half is an opportunity for them to improve at each position against a good team. Arnott fires one into traffic and finds Colin Franklin, the tight end, for a first down. This is about the deepest penetration we've seen from Iowa State offensively. And a good throw here by Arnott. No question about his, uh, his, the health of his hand. He throws a frozen rope right there and a good catch by Franklin in traffic. But right here's where you find out what guys on your team are going to compete. And I know Paul Rose wants to see who he can count on down the stretch. Arnott fires one end zone intercepted. Terrence Anderson picks it off. Hamilton, the intended receiver, stumbled a bit and I think lost sight of the ball. And Anderson just floated off of Hamilton and made an easy catch in the end zone for the pick. Yeah, that was a case where Arnaud was trying to give his wide receiver an opportunity to go up and make a catch, and, and it looked like Hamilton, he's at the top of your screen right here. He's gonna run a post route, and I think he stumbles right here. And Arnaud throws the ball up, giving him himself, giving him a chance to go up and make a play, but he never saw the football, and it was an easy interception. And somehow it just seemed as if he lost his footing coming out of his break. So the last thing that Iowa State needed, they get as deep into Oklahoma State territory as they have offensively at any point today. And before they can enter the red zone, they turn it over. Kendall Hunter on the pitch. Pulled down at the 21-yard line. End of a yard, Jesse Smith made the tackle. Man, and Jesse Smith was shot out of a cannon right there. He's a, we talked about him a little bit earlier. He is a heck of a football player, and the reason he's a good player is because he is smart. He's not the most gifted athletically. He's small, not very big, but he understands football. He understands offenses and sets and blocking schemes, and, and he beat uh, Hunter to the punch right there for tackle for loss. Check down route to Fuchs. And he picks up about four yards. Josh Raven made the tackle. And when you get good blocking on the perimeter by your wide receivers, Mike Gundy likes that. He says, well, now I'll feed him a little bit. You block for me in the running game, I'll throw you the ball in the passing game. And it's a, a yin and yang there. And you got to be a complete player at the wide receiver position if you're going to play in Mike Gundy's offense. Third down and five. Oklahoma State in no hurry with a 27 to nothing lead, taking the play clock all the way down inside of five. And Robinson can't escape the rush. And he goes down back at the 20-yard line. Bailey Johnson with the sack. Although it may have been a designed quarterback draw by Robinson. Yeah, I think you're right, Bob. I think it was a designed quarterback draw here. And a good job by the defensive line up front of Iowa State and Bailey Johnson atones for that personal foul penalty he had. That had to feel good for him. You know those defensive linemen, they get a sack, and then when they land on top of the quarterback, that's probably the best feeling in the world for those guys. Returnable kick for Josh Lenz. And he stays in bounds and gets to midfield. ABC Tuesday, the number one new drama on television has arrived. It's ABC's V. Over 18 million viewers welcome the visitors from beyond. Don't miss a second of the series. Critics are calling electrifying, stunning, and instantly addictive. ABC's V, all new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on ABC.
They still believe here in Ames. Now 27 to nothing. Arnott under pressure to the sideline, knocked away. I guess if you spend all day painting your chest, you're not leaving early. <laughs> you, know, you never know when the camera might find you. And it was quite colorful as we were driving into the stadium uh, early today, about two and a half hours before the game. It was a lot of tailgates, a lot of people. You put in that kind of effort, although that guy <laughs> needs another coat. Yeah, he needs a fresh. But you put in that kind of effort, you're not leaving. <laughs> Arnott on the keeper. Falls into plus territory for a gain of a couple. Shane Jarka made the tackle for Oklahoma State. And we should give Mike Gundy some credit as well. You know, you talk so much about the job that Paul Rhodes has done, even in one year reinvigorating the campus here at Iowa State. But Mike Gundy takes over an Oklahoma State program, now in his fifth year. And at one point this season has the number five overall in the polls. Arnott fires one high into traffic and incomplete. But with the win today, it would be a seven-win season for the fourth straight year for Oklahoma State. That's a first in program history. This would be a fourth Big 12 road win in a row. That's a first since joining the conference for Oklahoma State. Now, you wonder, for the folks back in Stillwater, how much slack they cut Mike Gundy if you keep losing to Texas and Oklahoma, though. Those are two schools he's never beat. Well, last year, they're 5-3 and three in the conference, but they lose to the number one, number two, and number three teams in the country at those times, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Tech. So uh, a little bit of leeway, but they're getting some, some talent here at Oklahoma State that they can compete with the big boys. Well, obviously, he felt, as the punt is down, that if he had had... Des Bryant, if he had had a healthy Kendall Hunter, that, you know, maybe it would have been a different story against Texas. But, you know, if you got a five game win streak against the Big 12 North, if you are, you know, putting together constant improvement, you wonder, I guess, how long the honeymoon lasts when you take a team that was struggling and get them up to that at least middle level, but you're still a notch below in the Big 12 South. It's hard. You're constantly going to be compared yeah. with Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah, I don't think anybody cares what his record is against the Big 12 North this year. It's been pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty abysmal in that division, but they care about Texas and Oklahoma and Texas Tech. I guarantee you that. Robinson underneath Cooper Bassett. Let's quickly go back to Matt Weiner in a Sports Center right now. All right, Bob, Sports Center right now is presented by Sprint. Number three, Alabama is taking the lead on LSU. Greg McElroy hits Darius Hanks for the go ahead score. 10 7 there as the Tide try to clinch the SEC West. And number eight, Oregon has trailed all day at Stanford, but Jeremiah Masoli's gotten them back in a big place. They've done it for the Ducks, and they're down by 10. All right, Matt, thanks very much. Second down and four for Oklahoma State. There goes Toasted up the middle again. Out to the 36-yard line. Well, Oklahoma State already with a head-to-head -head loss to Texas. They play Oklahoma to end the regular season. But not only are those their two chief competitors just in their own division, but, Brian, I would think those are their two chief competitors for players. Well, for recruiting. And, and we were talking with Mike Gundy yesterday, and the interesting thing he said... Over half of his players at Oklahoma State come from Texas. And Stillwater's only three and a half hours from Dallas, so he's competing with the Texases, the Texas Tech, Baylor, all those teams for kids out of Texas. And he's finally getting some of the top guys out of that state so he can compete. A couple of more yards from Tostin, who has now gone over 100 yards for the third game this season. Now up to about 116 yards and two touchdowns today. Now Oklahoma State hasn't beaten Oklahoma or Texas in 13 straight. Mike Gundy personally is 0-9 against OU and UT. And they've got one more chance this year to break that string. And they, I think they have the talent to do it. They certainly have the scheme to do it, uh, the offense, the talent. The biggest difference this year is the defense. I've been really impressed with their defense, especially against the run here today. If they can continue to play good defensive football and mix in some good offensive ball as well, if they've been throughout the years, I think they have a chance. End of the third quarter, and it's been all Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy's team, number 19 in the BCS. 
but his team has been tremendous on the ground today. Complimenting Robinson. Hundred and sixteen yards rushing and two touchdowns for Keith Tostin. And Zach Robinson has been the beneficiary of all that run support. But a wide receiver hits to Justin Blackman. And Blackman, man for man on the edge, picks up a first down to the 42-yard line of Iowa State. You may have seen the eye black on Keith Tostin as well. He has eye patches that he wears under his eyes with the name Mickey on them. And those are in honor of his mom. She suffers from lupus, and she actually has been suffering from lupus all the way back to the time that he was in high school. And when his dad was working 12 hours a day trying to take care not only of his mom, but of the entire family, it would fall to Keith Tostin sometimes as Hunter runs to the near side and loses a few yards. But it often it would fall to Keith Tostin as a middle school student and as a high school student to be there to take care of his mom when she would have her bad days. You could see the eye black with the word Mickey on them. Yeah, he would take care of his mom and you know, obviously lupus is such a debilitating disease, attacks the immune system, will leave her in tremendous pain at times. Yeah, there's no cure for, for lupus and, uh, and there you see Zach Robinson has press on on his eye black. That's from, in honor of his grandfather who passed away the week of, of the Texas A&M game and Zach went to visit him on a on a Monday before the game and, and his grandfather eventually passed away on Wednesday and that was his saying was press on he used to tell his kids and he used to tell Zach Robinson looks for the big play and has one that's dropped by Blackman at the 16 yard line right into the hands of the red shirt freshman and he couldn't hold on big play down the field and uh, Blackman just uh, has the ball go through his hand, but a good job of escaping there again, buying some time in the pocket. Looked like he tried to run with the football before he got it in his hands. And Zach Robinson has dealt with a lot of adversity on the field and off the field uh, this year. We talked a lot about him losing uh, his two biggest weapons, but uh, losing his grandfather was played a big role in his life and had to overcome that this season. Flags thrown. It might be delay of game as the play clock had wound down. Delay of game against the offense. Penalties five yards. Remains third down. How much do scouts factor all that in when they analyze Robinson? You lose Des Bryant. You lose your running back. You go through a lot of the personal turmoil. And maybe you have a four-interception game against Texas. But there are extenuating circumstances when you analyze Robinson as an NFL it's, prospect. It's huge. I mean, trust me. They analyze every detail of your life, your ability to play football, your ability to handle adversity, how you play under pressure, how you play when your team is down. All of that factors into an NFL evaluation. All the time in the world for Robinson. He buys himself some more time, and now he'll run it. And he'll take a shot. At the 44-yard line from Jake Knott, who came up and made the tackle. Because as a, you know, Zach Robinson is going to have a future in the NFL, and, and they want to know the NFL is about adversity and how do you react to that adversity. Things aren't always going to go your way. You're going to have off-the-field issues, and, and all those things for Zach Robinson this year have come up, and he's had to do a lot himself. He's had to deal with a lot off the field, and uh, I think he's done tremendously well under that pressure. Wobbly kick by Sharp. Fair catch called for and made at the 15-yard line by Josh Lenz. It's been all Oklahoma State here in Ames today. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Kay Jewelers. A 71-degree autumn day here in Ames. Couldn't ask for better weather, but if you're an Iowa State fan, you certainly could ask for a better result. 27 to nothing. There you go. She thinks my tractor's sexy. <laughs> That's a good fan. What's he hauling there? I think he's hauling raisins right here. Let his shoe fall out of the tractor. Excellent telestration. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to <laughs> telestrate raisins very often. Low snap. Arnaud dumps it over the middle. Caught by Hamilton. He has a first down. 
for the 27-yard line. Donald Booker making his 47th start today for Oklahoma State, adding to his Oklahoma State record. He's been a rock in the middle of that defense. Arnott goes down at the 26-yard line. Swanson Miller with the sack. And let's check in with Matt. All right, Bob, time for our at and All-America Player of the Week update. Colt McCoy's favorite target was all over the field against Central Florida. Jordan Shipley collected 11 catches for a school record 273 yards and a score. To cast your vote, text the word vote to 345-345. All right, Matt, that pass thrown behind Josh Lenz. Now, you talked earlier on this week, we did the game Tuesday night, about your Heisman hopefuls. Yep. And you didn't have Tim Tebow or Colt McCoy up amongst your top five. Is there anything Colt McCoy can do? I mean, you know, you obviously threw 11 balls to Jordan Shipley today. Does that get him back into contention? Well, the thing that, that Colt McCoy can do, he, he does have, he's playing in Big 12 South, and he's going to play in the Big 12 Championship. So he's got some time to, to perform and get back on that list. But no, the three kings, Bradford, Tebow, and McCoy, were not on my list. I had some, had some uh, upset specials. Arnott throws on the run. Lenz makes the catch out to midfield. We take a look at some of the numbers. The Heisman watch now. Tebow, McCoy, and the guy that I think is the favorite at this point, Mark Ingram. Yeah, right there, because he, everybody in the SEC knows he's going to run the football, and he's still averaging over 100 yards a game. And that is not easy to do in that conference. And if they can continue to move on and win tonight, beat Florida, I don't think there's any way you keep Mark Ingram off the podium in New York. Case Keenum's an interesting candidate, though. The numbers he's put up this year at Houston. And C.J. Spiller, I mean, C.J. Spiller has been as important for that Clemson football team as any player in the country and has been electric. The tough sledding today for Alexander Robinson. Victor Johnson brought him down, but Robinson just edging up to 50 yards on the day. This is a player that averages over 100 yards per game, the leading rusher in the Big 12 coming into today. He has been held in check, though, by Oklahoma State. Arnott down the sideline. There's the big play they've been waiting for. Robinson, the distance for the touchdown. <laughs> Iowa State will send their offense back out onto the field to go for two. Some confusion as the kick group had gone onto the field, so they have to replace the kick group with the starting offensive unit. The play clock has yet to even begin, though, so plenty of time to get the play called and get it off for the two-point conversion. And now the officials stop play and have to reset the football. I think it was Paul Rhodes from the sideline that said, I want the ball over on the left hash. Two-point conversion attempt. Oklahoma State calls a timeout on defense timeout. before the two-point conversion. The this is their first of the half. So Bill Young may have called that timeout from the sideline. Well, Robinson finally gets free, and it looked like Oklahoma State was in man coverage, and uh, they got a pick on the linebacker that was covering Robinson. You're going to see right here the receiver is going to come down and, and get a rub, and here's... The wheel route on the outside, Robinson got tremendous speed. All he needed was a little bit of a break. The X receiver makes him go underneath, and he's wide open, and a good throw by Arnott, and they finally get on the scoreboard. Good execution right here, and this is what Paul Rhodes is talking about. Keep playing. We're down 27 to nothing, but I want to see each, each of you guys play and execute every single play and get better and improve, and that's the only way that we're going to get better, and that's the message that Paul Rhodes is continuing to preach throughout this season. So now after the timeout, the two-point conversion. Arnott rolls. Looks back the opposite way. Flips it in the back of the end zone, and it's caught by Hamilton. 
So the two-pointer is good, and it's 27 to eight. And finally some noise here in Ames for Iowa State. The home team gets on the board. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Nissan Maxima, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Verizon Wireless, America's largest 3G network. Ah, uh, the low cholesterol offerings at the old Hickory restaurant <laughs> here in Ames. They serve over 16,000 people per week and over 20,000 pounds of meat. I can think of at least two more that might swing by after the game. I'm College awfully football. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> on ESPN and ABC presented by K Jewelers. Finally some smiles over on the Iowa State sideline as Austin Arnott flips a touchdown pass to Alexander Robinson. The two point conversion was good. And with 11.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Finally Iowa State on the board. Johnson stood up at the 20 yard line. Well, it's country's music, country music's biggest night with performances by Keith Urban, Sugarland, Taylor Swift, George Strait, and many more. Hosted by Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley. The CMA Awards live Wednesday at 8 7 Central on ABC. I like Keith Urban, you know? Keith Urban, he plays all the instruments. He plays the saxophone, he plays the piano, the guitar, sings, vocals, he does it all, man. He's a one-man show. Kind of the way you perceive yourself on this broadcast, I think. <laughs> Fair to say? Not so much. <laughs> okay. Does Iowa State get a stop here? A little flip to Kendall Hunter. Caught from behind. Only a gain of a yard. David Sims did a good job to recover and make the tackle. to throw on second and nine to the sideline. You could see Iowa State loading up to stop the run. And Robinson goes to the sideline about a yard, maybe two shy of a first down to Justin Blackman. Zach Robinson has the ability at the line of scrimmage to audible and call his own plays. And we were talking with Mike Gundy uh, last night. He said he'll call a play or two uh, from the sidelines. But Zach has the ability, if he sees something uh, defensively, to get into another protection or another route or another run or run the ball in a different direction if he sees a blitz coming off of one side. So he's got a lot of freedom in this offense, despite the fact that they look like they're always looking to the sidelines for the play. Well, give this crowd some credit, too. Ten and a half minutes to go. A timeout now called by Zach Robinson. And this building may be only about a half to two-thirds of the way filled at this point, but the crowd that's still here making a lot of noise on third down as Robinson takes time. 27 to 8, Oklahoma State, number 19 in the BCS, faced with third down and two here at Iowa State. Some of those guys that painted their chest might want to head over to that section. <laughs> They're looking for dancing partners. After the timeout, Robinson in the shotgun, traps a handoff to Toaston. And he's got the first down, and there he goes. Busting open is Toaston. Nice cut back at the 40. Keith Toaston had two touchdown runs in the third quarter and a huge run down to the two-yard line in the fourth quarter just about puts this game away for Oklahoma State. And that'll seal it uh, for Oklahoma State. A good job again on the outside by Annam getting a block to sustain, but uh, Toaston, a big back, 215 pounds, and he's got some speed as well. Having a great night tonight. 185 yards and two touchdowns already. 69 yards on that carry by Toaston. And now Bo Johnson comes in as the lone back. And Johnson up the middle at the goal line. No signal yet. May have been brought down just shy. It'll be second and goal inside the one. 
Well, if you're Mike Gundy, the offensive coaching staff for Oklahoma State, you sent Tostin back in there, polish it off. Nope, they're going to let Zach Robinson try to polish it off with a sneak. Second effort. And they may rule that again he was brought down shy of the goal line. And Tostin came down the sideline with his helmet on and said, Coach, I'm ready. Here he comes. <laughs> he wants to finish it off, and he deserves it. And He's had two touchdowns already tonight, and if he gets a third here, you know who he's going to be thinking of. He's going to be thinking of Mickey, his mother at home. And Mickey, if you're listening, we hope you're doing well, and your son's had a heck of a night tonight. He's putting on a show already a career high in rushing yards. Third down and goal. Toasting into the end zone for the third time here in the second half. And he walked in on this one, and Robinson stumbled getting away from center, but uh, that may have been the easiest touchdown that Keith Toasting's ever scored. And you got to feel good for, for a fourth-year senior that's waited his time. Had a younger guy, Kendall Hunter, come in and kind of take all the accolades, take a lot of the playing time at the tailback position for Oklahoma State. And he's, he's been tremendous as a leader. Well, not only 186 yards rushing for Keith Tostin to go along with three touchdowns, obviously a career high, 186 yards. But 288 total yards rushing for Oklahoma State as a team. And they are in control. Bob Wischusen and Brian Greasy here in Ames, Iowa, watching Keith Tostin put on a show today for Oklahoma State. I would say when you're averaging over nine yards per carry, that's pretty good. <laughs> Three touchdowns, 186 yards, a career high for Keith Tostin. And uh, he came into this game third in the conference uh, in rushing yards per game. And that may very well put him at number one over Robinson, who plays for Iowa State. Josh Lenz from inside the one. And the true freshman pays a price at about the 24-yard line. Darius Darks on the stop. And the afternoon for Keith Tostin, it began in the light. It has gone to darkness. He's got three touchdowns. Well, it doesn't matter whether it was light out early in the game or later in the game when it started to get twilight. He has had holes to run in. And He's going to take his wide receivers out for dinner this week for all the blocks they threw on the outside. And he was able to finish on a bunch of runs with three touchdowns. And that was the last one to seal the victory. But great night for Keith Toast. How about Hubert Anyum blocking all the way downfield inside the five yard line? They do a great blocking wide receivers with the Cowboys. Alexander Robinson brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Justin Gent made the stop. Only 61 yards, now up to 62 yards rushing today for Iowa State. And this is a team that was number one in the Big 12, averaging over 200 yards per game on the ground. Arnott into traffic, intended for Williams, broken up by Gent. Arnott up the sideline into traffic. Terrific catch made by Darius Darts. Well, how did that ball find its way to his hands? Well, I, I, I can't answer that question for you, partner, because this is putting a needle in a, in a very tight space right here. Wow. Tremendous uh, catch there. Just snuck it over Andre Sexton. Arnott comes to the near side again looking for a big play. But it's over Hamilton's head and out of bounds. Well, this is all part 
of the rebuilding process for Paul Rhodes. A lopsided game today against Oklahoma State, but still already five wins today. The first time that a rookie head coach at Iowa State has won five games in his first year since 1931. He watches his quarterback go down, though, at the 35-yard line, Patrick Levine with the sack and tonight on ABC more college football most of the nation will see a Big East rivalry game between UConn and number five Cincinnati other parts of the nation will get Oklahoma Nebraska and USC Arizona State check your local listings for the game in your area Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern Cincinnati may be moving up to the four position with the loss to Iowa deflected ball picked off by Levine right off the chest of Hamilton so another tough luck interception for Austin Arnott. And a frustrating afternoon continues for Paul Rhodes. And it just has not been Paul Rhodes' night tonight or this Iowa State team hoping to come in here and, and get an upset. But a good throw here by Arnott right off the chest of Hamilton. But Iowa State will move on. I mean, it, they've had some ups and downs this year. Some losses early in the season. A huge win against Nebraska that really Kind of drained them emotionally, I think. And last week went into Texas A&M and got beat pretty good. But they had had a few weeks there of high emotion and high drama, and it kind of drained these kids. Tostin again. Good yardage as he gets to the sideline and picks up seven more. Tostin running for Oklahoma State. Well, you mentioned the loss earlier today, not only of their quarterback for Iowa, but also of their undefeated season as they go down to Northwestern for the second year in a row. And boy, doesn't that now kind of reopen the eyes of Boise State, maybe even a one-loss team like Oregon if they can pull out their game against Stanford. Cincinnati, you mentioned tonight, they're number five in the BCS. Iowa's right ahead of them. Everybody's alive. Cincinnati with a win tonight can advance. TCU is there. LSU is beating Alabama right now. And if they beat Alabama, get to the SEC championship game and beat Florida, they could be in the national championship. As we take a look at the BCS standings, as Tostin is close to a first down. Now, with these undefeated teams still there, for the sake of argument, let's say that Cincinnati, TCU, and Boise stay undefeated. If LSU beat Alabama and then beat Florida in the SEC championship game, would you hop them over all those undefeated teams? No doubt in my mind. For them to lose a three-point game to Florida early in the year, but then to go and beat Alabama on the road and then win in the SEC championship, that's a lot to ask. But if they could do that, there is no way you keep LSU out of Pasadena, in my mind. It's a pretty sizable disadvantage between they and say at least Cincinnati who if they beat UConn tonight would move up but they would just re-spark the debate <laughs> about the system and I well, think rightfully so I think the BCS uh, execs were hoping that Iowa would win that game but now it's it throws everything into a, a frenzy and it's exciting to talk about I don't know how exciting it is for the head coaches of those three ball, ball clubs. Time it's Bo Johnson down to the 41 yard line. Well, I heard Chip Kelly earlier today on game day, and he was asked by Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit Street, the guys, you know, if you now run the table after the win you had against USC, well, what about, he said, I don't even understand the BCS. I don't know how many fans out there understand it. I don't understand it. Yeah. You just play and see how it works out in the end. They were trying to see if they could jump Boise, who was undefeated, and beat Oregon. But Oregon has been more impressive in the last few weeks to a month. And uh, that's that's a sticky situation when you get in the head-to-head -head against how you look against uh, certain teams. Uh, it's not ideal by any stretch. A yard shy of a first down for Bo Johnson with five minutes to go. This Oklahoma State offense, I, I've been impressed with them this game. They call a lot of their plays at the line of scrimmage. You see all these guys over here. These are all the guys signaling the, uh, the I don't know what this one is right here. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Something smells. <laughs> I don't know what that one is, but you tell me how you read all this stuff. <laughs> That's a lot of information Some, coming into the sideline. Sometimes, sometimes those, those backup quarterback singer, they'll, they'll do something funny just to see if they can get the quarterback to laugh on the field. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that might have been what that was. 
Posted finds a little cutback lane on third down and picks up another first down with a four-yard gain. All right, now you're an old quarterback, and you take a look at all this, and you tell me what they're about to call. <laughs> well, I remember, I was, I, remember I was playing at Michigan, and one of the guys over here that was signaling was Tom Brady, and he used to try to get me to laugh. He'd signal something funny to see if I'd laugh. Only end in the game, though, but... Look at Zach Robinson there he smiling. Is. He's laughing. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh. They probably have a bet going on over here. Who can get him to laugh the most? <laughs> Johnson brought down right at the line by Josh Raven. And he spells Keith Tostin at least for a moment. And Tostin, who knows, his afternoon might be done. 200 yards even and three touchdowns? That might be good enough. Yeah, I think he, uh, he earned his keep tonight. And uh, like you said, uh, credit this entire offense blocking for him downfield. Toasting out of the game, and Zach Robinson may have just gotten a little bit of a curtain call as well as Alex Kate has gone in now at quarterback. Johnson close to the 30-yard line. So Zach Robinson not only is going to win today in impressive fashion and lead a few long touchdown drives, 19 of 24 for 142 yards and a touchdown. But he also passed Mike Gundy's school record for most yards in a career. He's now over 8,000 yards for his career. And in yards and touchdowns, he's the all-time record holder for the Cowboys. Well, he is, and uh, I know that last week was a disappointment. Losing to Texas is not the way that he wanted to go out against UT, but... Uh, this is a big win, a good way for him to re rebound after last week. And they still have Texas Tech next week, Colorado, and at Oklahoma. So a good way, a good opportunity for him to finish out his career at Oklahoma State on the right foot. And Tostin was not done yet. Back in and carries for two more yards. So it will be fourth down and about three. And this will take us under two minutes to go. And up 34 to 8, Oklahoma State will leave their offense out there, I think, simply to go for it on fourth and three. <laughs> Toasted on fourth and three, has a first down again. Well, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. One last curtain call for Keith Tostin. And the run game today, dominant for Oklahoma State. 317 yards rushing. All right, coming into this game, you would have expected that to be flipped, if anything. Iowa State coming in averaging 200 yards on the ground a game, but they just did not have an answer for Keith Tostin. And with uh, Kendall Hunter being injured, Keith Tosin has taken the reins of this Oklahoma State offense. Up the middle, running wide, Travis Miller. Down to about the 10-yard line. Inside of a minute to go, and at this point, Oklahoma State, if they should choose, can simply take a knee. And it looks as if that is now what they are going to do. The game, the last game of the year against Oklahoma, I think will be big for Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy. Losing to Texas, but they can get a win against Oklahoma and go into this offseason with that taste in their mouth. Uh, that's something they can build on. But without Des Bryant, and for a good portion of the season without Kendall Hunter, Keith Tostin has emerged as the workhorse and the go-to guy. And it's not like he didn't have a resume that was certainly impressive prior to this. Kendall Hunter got a lot of the headlines because a 2,400-yard rusher and was a preseason first-team All-Big 12 selection. But Tostin, who Gunter Brewer told us, always knew he had ability. We always knew that if he had the chance to be the go-to man, that he would be able to be a leader. Well, he was a leader today, and he's been a leader all season. 
and the fourth straight time that Oklahoma State has won seven or more games in a season. The first time that's happened in school history for Mike Gundy's team. And a big win, obviously, for, for Oklahoma State. A good opportunity for them to finish, and for Paul Rhodes at Iowa State, they'll build on this. A lot to come back from, and they have an opportunity with a coach with a lot of passion and integrity. So once again, our final score, Oklahoma State 34, Iowa State 8. For Brian Greasy, I'm Bob Oshusen. From our entire crew, so long from Ames, Iowa, let's head back to our New York studios in John Saunders.